Blog Talk Radio. Are you enjoying the smoothest? You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Call in to join the conversation at 646-668-8393. Hey, bro, what's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to another episode of Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Looks like Blog Talk does not like us this evening as far as our uh, audio tracks go, but we could just roll with it and keep going. It is the 3rd of December. We've got two more episodes after this one before we go into 2019 and the second season of Straight Talk with Dean and Mark, formerly the voice of the people. We've been rocking and rolling for like four years, and we're going to keep rolling now. But this is the six-man Dean Geronimo. From NJ to NC, as always, I'm in the studio with my partner in crime, my co-defendant, Mark Lee. So, Mark, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, bro. Well, you know, for one thing, the weather is acting really crazy around here. We got, like, the temperatures, I think they were in the 70s yesterday. Today, they're, like, in the 60s. So, uh, you know, we're having, like, spring-like weather in the middle, in the early part of December. So, we're sitting going, like, we're, what's going on? But we ain't arguing with it because we're enjoying it. Because I also heard that on December the 8th, they're talking about that thing, that four-letter word that begins with an S coming down here yeah. and dropping some snow on it. So, I'm sitting there going, like, wait a minute, we're going to be from the 70s to snow. You know what? Y'all can have that down there because, you know, once it gets up here to Jersey, man, it's nice, cold, and uh, it comes down thick. So, you know, we try to keep it and hold off as much as we can. <laughs> oh, I agree. Like I said, I was enjoying the spring day today. I went for a little bit of a walk in the afternoon, and it was a nice, pleasant walk. Because I'm sitting there going, like, I could do with this all December long and would have no arguments whatsoever. If he wants to stay in the 70s in December, if he wants to stay in the 70s in January or February, I will not cry about it in the least bit. But I know that that is not the way that the man above works. He does have seasons, and those seasons happen for a reason. So I'm sure that we're going to get some cold weather, and I'm going to have to deal with it. But for right now, you know, I was able to walk around in just a sweater. Didn't have to have a jacket on and just enjoy some cool weather. So I've been there going, like, this is what it's like in early December. So I am not one to cry about that whatsoever. So I sat there and went, like, hey, this is all right. I can agree with this all together. But then in terms of events going on, you know, this was an, actually a very busy weekend. I was been fighting that cold, so I didn't do as much as I would have liked to have done. But I did get by. You remember we had Eric Kelly on a while back, and he's a mm-hmm. business person, a PR guy. But he had his Black Business Expo. So I stopped by that at the Marriott, and there was a lot of people dropping knowledge, a lot of business owners that I had the pleasure of meeting and talking to and told some of them about the podcast. And uh, some of them seem like they might be interested in being guests. So we'll be following up with them on 2019. But, I mean, like a lot of things, there was a lot going on. There was another art thing called Patchwork, which is more focused on visual artists and craft artists and things of that nature. But they were going on across the street at the Armory. So they might have taken part of the crowd or they might have taken part of each other's crowds. But it was I would have liked to see more people attending. But that's the way things go sometimes. You don't always get attendance that you want. I'm not sure what PR he did and how he got the word out, but there was a lot of things going on in the community. So, you know, sometimes despite those things, you got various things happening in your community. And But uh, it still looks like he was having a good time. and looks like he was at least somewhat pleased with the turnout, and I'm sure he'll use that as a uh, building resource. And then over at Haiti, we had uh, a couple of events. So, uh, on Friday, uh, no, I'm sorry, on Saturday, Black Poetry Theater, which is an offshoot of Poetry Slam, as one of the Sun and Church's projects, they have formed a theater company that definitely got a lot of elements of both poetry, spoken words, but also elements of theater. So uh, they did a theater production. The Sun, of course, was one of the stars that recited some poetry as well as some other people that were in that play. So uh, that was real good checking that out and seeing that. And then yesterday we had our regular two church services with Christ Central that meets over there. And then in the afternoon, we had the library doing one of their events. And they always do one around December, centered around Christmas. You know, mm-hmm. the Christmas season is about to come on. So they had a choir from one of our local high schools, um, Durham School of the Arts, and 
they performed uh, with a full flyer. I mean, it was like, you know, one of them big choirs of about 40 or 50 members, and they belted out some classic Christmas songs and things of that nature. And then uh, Randall McNamara, who's a local artist, did some more campy kind of songs, but that's part of her stick is she did some songs that she called them that were a little bit on the fat shaming side because she did some songs about Santa Claus and his roly poly self and also did some songs about um, the <laughs> diets that she put on and how those diets did not always work. So she named those diets and she made fun of herself, but in a pleasant kind of way. See, I don't think she was knocking people that are fighting weight loss and things of that nature, but she was just having fun at her own expense while also delivering some humorous songs. So I think folks definitely enjoyed her routine. Okay, indeed. Now, what I want to do, too, is um, before we really get into some more conversation, is to welcome our new listeners, not only in Rhode Island, but also the countries of Indonesia, Bulgaria, and Vietnam. So now, welcome to the Straight Talk family. We're now at 61 countries and 47 states. We're still looking for the other three states so we can get the whole country. But that's right. <laughs> take it as it comes by. We appreciate all our listeners, past, present, and future. So from Dean Geronimo and Mark Lee, we thank all of you. You know, um, the federal government is going to be closed on Wednesday, December fifth, for a National Day of Mourning for uh, former President George H. W. Bush, who was the forty-first president of these United States. Um, his body made it to D.C. today So, you know, they're going to shut the government down Except those essential positions And those that have to work in the interest of national security So a lot of federal employees are getting a free day off Kind of like a holiday You know? Wow, that's good. that's interesting Like I said, I know some people were reflecting on the uh, President Bush's life and some of the things that he did great and some of the things that they were not as pleased with that he did. So uh, I'm sure that those reflections will still be continuing on as folks reflect on what his legacy was, both as uh, as president and also some of the other offices that he held as well. So there's a lot of folks that will be reflecting on his legacy and what that legacy means to the overall population. And I'm sure there will also be people making comparisons between him and that current person that's in that office that he sat in for many years and uh, been making some parallels both on the good and the bad based the way he handles the press and the way that the current person handles the press as well as some of their uh, policy decisions. Some that might be similar, some that might be different, but uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of reflections as folks think about that. You know what? Nothing compares to this one that we have now. He is a very unique individual, and I'm going to leave it at that. We will not bash him today. You know, we get into the holiday season. I mean, I'm going to try to be a little decent right now. So we're going (laughs) to switch our conversation off of that one. I understand. And speaking of speaking to switch it off of that, you know, down there in the West Coast and all those areas, they've been having some serious disasters. We know about the fires in Alaska. And one of the states that we are missing, we did have a guest from this state, but we have not had reports of listeners from that state yet. But that is Alaska. So, you know, I've got to check in on Mahogany and see how Mahogany is holding up because they had a major earthquake over there, and they're dealing with that and how they can cope with that. So, Life is slowly settling down in Alaska following a powerful earthquake that rattled buildings, disrupted power, and caused heavy damage to the only highway that goes north of Anchorage. Still, hundreds of oh, wow. aftershocks sprayed nerve Saturday as people were worried about being caught in more massive shakers. So uh, that's definitely going on. It says that employees who live in communities north of Anchorage have been encouraged to see if they could uh, take Monday off. So speaking of saying people having days off, they were encouraged to take the day off. And they were also encouraged to work from home or to reduce the numbers of cars on Glen Highway as crews repair damage. So motors trying to travel north on Friday were at a virtual standstill on the highway. So uh looks like they've definitely been dealing with a uh, lot of stuff that was going on over there over the uh, weekend. So uh, says Governor Bill Walker, who leaves office Monday, 
has given state office workers in the Anchorage area the day off to ease the traffic congestion. So looks like he was trying to find a way to uh, see what he could do. And it says the magnitude 7.0 quake didn't cause widespread damage to structures or collapsed buildings. There is a good reason for that. It says a devastating 1964. I was only, depending on when it happened, I was either a year and a half or two years old when that happened. But it says a devastating earthquake, the most powerful on record in the United States, led to stricter building codes to help structures withstand the shifting earth on Friday. So a, says, a seismic expert said Alaska and California use the most stricter standards to help buildings withstand earthquakes. So, I mean, when you're in those areas where those things are happening, I imagine you've got to have all kinds of strict uh, guidelines in order to make sure that um, you're doing all right. Wow. But I just read something else as I was stumbling through this article. It says that there were about, are you ready for this, Dean? There were about 550 aftershocks, including 11 with magnitude wow. of 4.5 or greater in the 24 hours following the Friday uh Timbler or Trimber, whatever they're trying to say that word to be. But, yeah, so, so apparently the incident happened on Friday, and we're talking that there were 550 aftershocks within, like, a 24-hour period. And they're even wow. saying that the aftershock, just, just kidding, it says the aftershock should be weaker and less frequent in the coming days, but officials couldn't, stop, couldn't say for sure when they'll stop. So it looks like they're going to be dealing with these aftershocks for a while. Goodness, uh, prayers go out to them, man. Because, wow, I can I couldn't even imagine being in that situation where it's like it's ongoing and it never stops. Oh yeah, like I said, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a couple of years back where we had a aftershock on the uh, East Coast, and. I remember being at an office, and we were all sitting there going, like, what the heck is this? And that was just like a minor shift in the earth plate. So it wasn't even like a major tremor like what folks in California and Alaska and some of those other places that have that are sitting on those tremor lines have to do with on a regular basis. But I just remember us feeling that shake at, uh, I believe I might have been when I was working at uh, one of my jobs with measurement, and we were sitting there going, like, what is this? Because you can literally feel the earth shake. And if I remember correctly, I believe that that shift, like I said, it was several years back. I want to say it was up and down the East Coast. But, you know, we don't have to deal with that that often. But, you know, those plates that are right. on, that the earth sits on are all over the U.S. So there's no telling when you might get hit by them. I mean, of course, California and other places get hit more frequently than we do. But that does not mean that we are immune from them. Not at all. And I remember exactly what day that was because I was at work and then I looked and I looked at my drink and my drink was shaking and the table was moving and I got up under the table and um, my coworker started laughing at me and I said, well, I don't mean any disrespect. I've lived in California so the first time it ever happened scared me half to death. But then I'm like, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not but for right now, I'm getting ready to get up under this table. And then when they call for everybody to lead a building, I walk outside and some people are crying because in Jersey, that's rare, you know. So, right. and I'm like, okay, I'm listening. This lady was like, oh, it's a, a, a small earthquake. Oh, my God, oh, my God. I was like, now nah, don't look so crazy getting up under that table, you know. <laughs> No, nah, like but I said, you I, never know when those situations are going to happen that make you think about these things. Because I'm on a different topic, but still kind of that, what you don't know how to cope with things until you're actually in that situation. And this actually came up mm-hmm. in a conversation with a friend of mine, another friend. But we were talking about people that have um, the, uh, like you're coming back from the wars. I forget the initials, uh, P, uh, post-traumatic P- syndrome. PTSD. PTSD, right? Um, PTSD. And, and I, yes, I remember working with a gentleman that was a coworker of mine, and he had that. And I remember he went basically off, and he, like I said, I had never dealt with that before. I've had friends that were veterans, and I've had relatives that have served in the military, but I had never dealt with this. And we were working on a uh, site at, at North Carolina Central University. I believe we were uh, doing some appraising of some of their buildings, and I was doing more like the administrative kind of work, and I think they were going into the buildings and making estimates. But, you know, he definitely went into a different kind of 
personality, and I'm sitting there going like, look, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. 